In this part, we are going to learn about math operations. And those are in Python fairly similar because you probably already know them from basic math classes that you learned when you were something like five or six. It's really basic. We have plus, minus, multiply, and divide. And besides that, we also have power, floor divide, and remainder. I guess the letter three are a tiny bit more advanced, but not that much. Besides that, you can also use brackets perfectly fine, like in any kind of computer calculator you ever used. There are also comparison operators, like smaller than or smaller equal than, but those we will cover later because they work ever so slightly differently. I guess I can talk about them for a tiny bit, but don't worry about those too much yet. Let's have a look at all of this. Here again, I have a completely empty Python file. And I want to start by printing a math operation. And this I just do by typing the math operation in here. For example, 10 plus 5 is going to give me 15. And that is literally it. It's quite simple. If I duplicate this line, I can change this to a minus. And now we get 5. I could duplicate this again change this to multiply and duplicate it once more and change this to divide. And that way we have all the basic operators. So if I run this, we get 15, 5, 50, and 2. I guess the one thing you do want to notice here is that when we're using division, this operation here, Python is giving us 2.0. It happens to add a 0, .0 even though we wouldn't need it. It's really not a big deal, but just keep it in mind. Besides that, we have slightly more advanced map operators. Let me print 10 star star and 5, and this is giving us a fairly large number because we are taking the power here. I guess if I do a 2, we have the equivalent of 10 to the power of 2, which is 10 multiplied by 10, which is 100. And this is what we are getting down here. Besides that, we also have what is called a floor divide. And to understand what that means, let me divide 10 by 3. If I do this, we get 3.333 and it continues basically forever. A floor divide essentially gets rid of all of the stuff after the decimal point. And this floor divide you get with two divide symbols. Meaning, if I run the code now, we are only getting 3. You are essentially rounding the result of whatever you are getting in here. Although, keep in mind, this value is not rounding the result. What we are doing is truncating the result, which is a fancy word for saying we are cutting off anything after the decimal point. I can demonstrate this by dividing 7 over 2. If you do this in your head, you are going to get 3.5 with a normal division. And if we were to round this number, it should be 4 because 0.5 is closer to 4 than it is to 3. But if I run the code again, I am getting 3. And just be careful here, this can sometimes cause you some errors where you're losing decimal points and then end up thinking you're rounding when you're not actually doing that. There's one more math operation we need. And that is done with the percentage sign. For example, this could look like 7 percentage 2. And if I run this, let's see what we get. We are getting 1. And this one here is the remainder. The best way to think about it is we have 7 units in total. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And when we are dividing 7 by 2, we are basically looking for two whole units to get a full number. Meaning here is 1, there is 2, and here is 3. And that is giving us the result we got from this operation. And this percentage symbol is giving us whatever remains at the end, which is this one here. And since this is 1, the 1 we are getting down here is, well, a 1. You don't see this symbol too often, but it can be really useful to figure out if a number is even or odd, something you do surprisingly often. We're going to have a look at that later. 
there's one more thing I do want to cover, and that is brackets. For example, I could print 5 times 2, and the result is going to be 10. This should be fairly simple. But now, if I do 5 plus 5 multiplied by 2, think about it for a second and see what you should be getting. The result is 15. And it is 15 because we always do multiplication first, and then we are doing addition and subtraction. Meaning this operation is basically 5 plus 10, which gets us 15. If I don't want to do that and add 5 plus 5 first of all, I have to put both of those into brackets, and now I'm getting 20. What we're doing now is 5 plus 5 is 10, and this we multiply with 2, which is getting us 20. I guess the one thing we can also cover is very simple comparison operators. And those do work in the same way that you would expect them to work, to be honest. For example, I could type 10 is greater than 5. The difference here is the result we are getting, because the result we are getting is true. Which I guess does make sense, because 10 indeed is greater than 5. If I flip this around, that 10 is smaller than 5, and run the code again, we are getting false. And how we can use these values, we will see later on. But for now, don't worry too much about this one. Now with that, we have covered the basic operations, and let's do an exercise. What I want you guys to do is to get the average of the numbers from 1 to 7. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, all divided by 7. And see how far you get. Once again, I have to type print. And now in here, I want 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. And all of this has to be inside of brackets, because what we are going to do afterwards is divide all of this by 7. And the issue is, in terms of math, if we left it like this, we would first divide 7 by 7, which would be 1, and then we are adding all of these numbers. But what we want to do instead is do all of this here first, and then divide it by 7. For this sort of thing, Sublime is quite intelligent. I can just select the entire text, create an open brackets, and then Sublime automatically adds the closing bracket afterwards. And with that, we are done. If I execute the code now, we get 4.0. Although looking at the result here, I realized for this entire part so far, I have only ever used full numbers, which you don't have to. It is perfectly fine to write something like 1 plus 1 plus 5. You would still get the appropriate result. Any number in here is going to be fine. This is working like any math operation you have ever seen. 